We are with Fresh Kasuni, and I have the privilege of being in your fantastic art studio. And I think I already have paint on me, which is a good sign, which means that there's production going on here. Um, so, Vrej, for this week of Hidden People, you are one of the more interesting hidden people, I would say, because of the work that you're doing in Armenia. Uh, but before we get to that, you are originally from Aleppo. Aleppo. And when did you come? Uh, when I came uh, in 1999. In 1999, in for the first time? For the first time and the last time, I think. <laughs> I think it was that for all of us repatriates, the first time we came was the last time we came. Because once we came, we knew that this I mean, was it. Uh, it was very interesting for me because when I came, uh, it was only for very short, kind of short, for two years period, I decided to come uh, to practice painting in motherland among uh, Armenian masters to learn from them and beside that <clears throat> as we always heard about uh, uh, these vivid colors of Armenian paintings and the nature uh, while we uh, while we, we used to watch Minas and Sarian, Sarian that's right I want to see these landscapes and the colors uh, alive front of my, of my eyes uh, without just watching or observing the paintings in uh, in published books, okay. uh, and it's happened that uh, after my stay, uh, I turned back for once to Aleppo. It was in 2001 when I went back for just visiting my parents in Aleppo, and my plans was to go back in 2000, end of the 2001, mm -hmm. and live in Damascus maybe or in Syria, Beirut later in Lebanon. But then I understood that it's not my world anymore because you know it's it's kind of uh, when the roof is getting down on your head and you want to yeah, grow explode. Up. Yeah. yeah, and I can imagine in a very conservative Armenian community in Syria, um, there aren't a lot of people who are exploring their artistic um, abilities as a profession. Uh, you know, we have we've had this discussion before on the program, and I can imagine um, it must have been when you were a little boy. I'm imagining you were painting when you were little because this does not happen overnight. This is a, I think it comes from birth or something. How did your parents react when you said you wanted to be, or did you ever say you wanted to be a professional painter? Uh, it's it's a very interesting story for me at least because uh, uh, my father's. Uh, part, uh, the, uh, the part, Kasuni families, they used to be always in art, uh, kind of in the music or painting or uh, in literature in general or hist uh, uh, as historians. But my father never, uh, he never been in art at all. He right. never dis got his education till the end. Uh, and that's why uh, in our family, in our house, we were a bit, because of the war, especially in Lebanon, right. I was very away from my sole father, Dr. Yervant Kasuni. Uh, he, he's my uncle, but... I he's he's my your sole father. father. Yes. I like that word, yeah. So um, I never had the chance till the end of the 90s, uh, um, during the end of the war, I didn't have the chance to meet him, to communicate with him in art and uh, to find myself in this area, it happened later. But for me, I used to draw and paint from childhood. And I remember in the school, uh, wherever I used to uh, get out with my friends or in the classroom, they you always used to ask me to draw for them. Uh, the funny thing is that I never thought that this is art. This could be an art. Right. This, it was just I didn't understand what the meaning of art for myself. Yeah. Uh, it was just an, something that I used to do, and I was always uh, criticizing my friends that you can do it as well. well. If and I can right. do it, you can well, do it. Yes, exactly. Uh, till uh, I remember that my parents every summer they used to send me to uh, to work in some uh, varbets or masters uh, as a mechanic. Yeah, we like the word varbet on this yeah. show. <laughs> I noticed that. So the main story is when I used to go to work, I found uh, a print house, silk print house, on my way. Paint 
house? Uh, silk printing house. Oh, silk printing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I used to. It was a basement, and I there was a small. They had a, it had a, a small window, and I used to watch how they are printing Mickey Mouse, Disney characters, on underwears or uh, yeah, T-shirts, etc. Uh, because I knew that my parents will be against this idea. Yeah. I went to to the basement. I will talk with the, the master of the, the owner of there. the. Uh, print house and uh, and ask him to come. I proved that I can draw. Uh, I want to be the graphic designer of the silk. Uh, printing How old house. were you? How old were you at this time? Do you remember? Uh, it was uh, I was about sixteen. I was. About so you 16. already have an idea. You know where you're going. I, I know I have a talent. Uh, I, I'm doing something that not uh, that I'm enjoying first. But uh, I I know that also. I knew that uh, my parents or uh, my mother's side of family they didn't understand this part of things and they thought that this is just a hobby, that you can kill your time with this. Not, it's not a profession. Mm -hmm. As a you, as a man, you have Especially, to do something yeah, sure you have serious. To family and all but uh, I remember that for. Three months I was going there, and uh, for uh, after three months uh, I used to like paint. To I learned all the process of silk printing, so later to understand how to draw for them. But my parents they noticed that uh, my dresses are clean. You were doing already. this secretly. Yes, I didn't tell them, uh, and I used to get more money. And uh, and they also were surprised. Um, you were getting more uh, salary now, uh, fees, and uh, you are with a clean dress coming back every day in summertime. And uh, my father followed me once, uh, uh, and he found out the whole story. And then I start to fight that I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do what I want. Uh, and uh, I remember that even I didn't want to continue my education. And I went to military, I served the military, and uh, before I go to the military service, uh, that period my uncle started, because the war was ending, right. it end of the 80s, uh, my uncle started to visit Aleppo more often, and he saw this once... This is the artistic Kassouni side. The yes. Yeah. And he saw, my uncle, he saw on my table in my room, I uh, was drawing a Mickey Mouse for ladies' underwear. Uh, on silk print. Maybe that's a business you should think about here. <laughs> I mean, I, I worked in that uh, business for a while. Yeah. And he saw, like he says, who drew this uh, beautiful lines Mickey Mouse? I said, me. Mm -hmm. He said, you should go to the Mardrosarian Academy in Aleppo. Oh, there is an academy. Yes, it, uh, the Mardrosarian Academy is the first artistic uh, educational kind of uh, boutique house in the Middle East built in uh, and the uh, mid of the 40s uh, by Dr. Robert Jabetjan. My first visit was very uh, kind of humbling. Humbling and also changed my life because uh, the first day I went in the Sardian Academy, the old one of course, they, which they destroyed it unfortunately, uh, but uh, I didn't go out. I mean, they, they were closing the door. They said, please go home. I mean, uh, we want, you can come next day, right. continue your drawing next right. day. So then I understood that it was the first thing that made me sit on the chair for four hours without moving. Aside from what we see, the caricatures that you're doing, are you doing a lot of political sort of cartoons as well? As I said, I mean, as uh, the paint or the painting or the I, I never, as I never thought that it, what I'm doing is an art. And then I became an artist. The caricature was the same for me. Uh, I used to do caricature all my life. Even I, they fired me out of the school because of one of the car caricatures of my teacher. I understood that it's caricature, and they uh, treated and how badly. How powerful it is, though! It could be powerful, right? Exactly. I know that many caricatures change political life in different countries. Even many caricatures, uh, caricatures being killed uh, in Middle East because of one single caricature. Yes, I love uh, doing political caricature and uh, I can't resist it. And uh, the thing is, uh, as uh, also uh, 
director and founder of the Reanimania International Animation Film Festival. Right, which we'll talk about. I have to, I have to know my limits, but my other side is Resh Kasuni, the caricaturist. I can't stop by telling the truth that I believe in it. Maybe I'm wrong. The caricature is my personality. I mean, it's my, it's in my personality. I can't live without that. I, uh, you I can do many different genres of painting, but the you come back to the caricature all the time. Uh, the grotesque and the exaggeration of mm -hmm. the theme is the basic, uh, the basis, the basic of the caricature, mm -hmm. and I use this in all genres, uh, genres of art that I, I work in. Right, right. You know, Armenia is a funny country. Um, we always say that if you want to do something today, it's too soon. But if you wait till tomorrow, it'll be too late. Um, you started the Reanimania International. Film festival. Film festival, which is dedicated to animation. Now, in Armenia, is there or has or was there a tradition of animation uh, that you would have the boldness to, to start a festival? Uh, it's a very interesting question, but uh, I will start with this. I, two days ago, I, I read uh, this. Uh, one of my friends on Facebook posted this uh, say says that never pred uh, predict the future, just create it now. Right. Uh, I think that was one of the motives that uh, forced me, pushed me forward to do this. Because when I came to Armenia in 1999, my dream was to work in animation field. And had you, uh, no. did you even have the knowledge of how to no. do it? Uh, uh, knowledge as a, like, uh, as an interested person uh, or fan of animation, I had the knowledge. Right. I used to buy books, I order books from the United States, right. from Europe, with, with, from, uh, to my friends. I read a lot, I watched a lot, I, have, I had a huge collection of animation films, uh, but technically not. Uh, and I knew that in Armenia there's a huge school, uh, at least, and masters, they can teach you uh, because they got it from the, during the Soviet so, period. And uh, I came and uh, I learned from Rob Sarkans first. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he taught me and uh, it was very interesting uh, meeting when I met him. He, uh, they told me that he was going, he's not going to teach you because he just doesn't want to teach anyone because he's not, he doesn't want. But when he saw my caricatures, he said, you, I remember it right, just like it was yesterday. He said, you have uh, balance in your drawings and you have movements in your drawings so you can be an animator. So I will then teach and you. And he decided to teach me. And I went uh, and he became my barber. But the, the sad story about this that I couldn't find a job to work as an artist. I'm, I'm, I come from a family that is not rich. You know, they, they, didn't, uh, they weren't able to help me financially, so I had to survive. So what did you do? Uh, <laughs> my first salary was from, uh, actually, if we talk about the salary, uh, my first salary in Armenia was to 12,500 drum in 1999 for one year from uh, as a caricaturist I used to give caricature almost every day for and they would months. pay you 12,500 per caricature? No, per, per month. month. <laughs> Which for our audience in the diaspora it's about $25. But in the diaspora nobody paid me. No, the so this was a good thing? Of course. Oh. I mean, my first salary in caricature was in Armenia, of course. But in animation, if we go back to the animation, I didn't find a job. I couldn't work. Uh, was there, were there um, companies at that there time? There was only High Film Studio, which right. was run by Rob Sarkans, and they had very limited budget, uh, limited projects they were using. And I mean, uh, Rob Sarkans also was... Uh, uh, saved the whole industry, we can say, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. So it was difficult to get in the business with them to work, especially if you are a beginner. But, uh, and, uh, and for years, I, I mean, after two years uh, of learning, I created my own boutique studio with the freelance friends, actually, they helped me. And I, I could say that I was the first independent animator doing uh, advertisements after Rob Sarkians, uh, which was very interesting because, I mean, it was kind of new wave. It was Rob and then me and then another two uh, individuals were doing, but it wasn't industry. Yeah, you couldn't consider it and to be... for yeah. years I was thinking what, I, what we can do 
to move things forward. And uh, in 2006, I got the first invitation as independent producer from Middle East, actually, as a Syrian Armenian, uh, to visit different festivals around the world. And uh, in 2007, it was Cannes for me, first time in my life. Uh, I went and it was to the Cannes. first festival that you had been to ever. Uh, no, it was there was a, of course my first festival was Golden Apricot. Oh well, of course. 2004. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a very historical moment, and I was very uh, happy with that because first year I, uh, I was also participating with short animation film. Uh, it was called the Big, but uh, in market of uh, cinema in uh, Cannes, I understand that that we need a market. We need something to move things forward. Sure. And uh, in 2007, when I got the chance to uh, go to UK in uh, University of West England mm -hmm. to be educated as. Uh, to the animator and the teacher, uh, I understood that uh, the festival is the best thing to promote and showcase. the professional right. first, the, the profession as uh, first for new generation, right. to bring people together and international expert together, uh, because most of the young generation here they are not able to travel to see uh, those and masters alive in front of them and to talk with them. End of the 2007, I start to talk with all partners in Armenia who are experts in doing festival, like Golden Apricot or the Cinema Center of Armenia. They said, you do and we support you. And in 2008, I remember uh, when I was visiting different countries uh, or I, when I was invited for uh, different forums in animation or market uh, of uh, cinema or etc. I used to talk about the festival as it is happening already and I wasn't sure because there was no single supporter and there was only a piece of paper written on it how I am imagining it's it. All, it's all about an idea. In 2008 I remember I, there was a lot three different fest festivals and events I participated and I was talking and inviting people to come to Armenia in 2009 in October for the Reanimania, which was nothing at all, nobody knew about it in Armenia. <laughs> I mean, besides uh, Rob Zakan and different sure, uh, people that you have spoken with. Yes, but it was a kind of I I imaginary thing. I mean, if there was no website, nothing at all. They, to and prove that we have a festival. No money, probably. <laughs> Which is always we, we still don't have enough <laughs> money, but I mean that time I mean we didn't even have a supporters. Okay, I, I need to ask the question. In October two thousand nine, did you hold the Rianimania Film Festival? Yep. Yeah. See, I've uh, you know the the common theme that I'm finding with all these hidden people that I'm interviewing is that you have an idea, you don't think too much about it, and you decide you're going to throw yourself full force, body, mind, spirit, and you make it happen. And I think that's a phenomenal story. Uh -huh. and, and it brought a new, mm -hmm. uh, it brought content and context and everything to the industry, which mm -hmm. really didn't even exist at the time. Uh, well, now, today, we have 75 years old Armenian animation history. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think uh, history is not enough. No, never. And uh, today, talking about it is not enough. We should just move forward to work on it. Uh, another example of doing the festival in 2009. I won't give a name, but a person promised me to be sponsor of the festival. Uh, and I was, because it was my first experience in that field, I, s I said, I got it, I have the sponsor. And for three, four months I was talking with everybody that we are doing it, I have the sponsor ready. And before three months of the festival, I, I understood that the budget that that person was talking about, it was about $1,000. Maximum. Had you not made it? Had you not made it clear how much you no. meant? Oh, I mean, <laughs> in 2009, I understood that this is not the budget, but we did it till the end because we had friends. We have friends uh, in Armenian, uh, the young generation. The festival's uh, advantage is is uh, presenting the new technologies of art uh, or art with the new technologies which means that most of the young generation are involved in it and that means also our audience 
uh, number it's more than ever could be and every year our uh, audience number is uh, growing uh, and that means that we have the ability to become the regional uh, hub in the animation so all we have to do is just uh, to work and the quality comes in the time Animation field is the second for me, from my point of view, after the IT field, is the, uh, the field that most of the young artists can work. And they can do, uh, I mean, for outsourcing, it's a good place to, uh, for them to work without leaving the country. Yeah, which is the most and important thing, is to create the, ability, the possibility for them to and, actually... And most of the international uh, industries, economy, the Ministry of Economy, and even the uh, presentational palace they are controlling over this kind of businesses because the it's uh, it, it brings income it's very serious business because imagine each project mm -hmm. if uh, about 25 per, uh, animators or right. artists are working on one project for short project if they will do feature film it costs uh, it means that you will have about 150 animators around to work on it that for two years time period that means industry that means income for those who are leaving the country now yeah. painters they are living to England uh, to Germany to Italy to Israel uh, wherever I mean why we can't save the, them a small uh, job here uh, at uh, in their homeland uh, with uh, even the smaller smaller salary but they are safe in their country and that's what we can do uh, even do more than what we are doing now mm -hmm. well, I'm sure I'm sure with with your passion and your talent and your vision because it's not enough sometimes just to have the talent you need to have a vision and you have to be really smart about it uh, to be I, can't, to I can't tell about being smart because uh, I'm an <laughs> no, artist think, at the end of the I, day. I, I think I think you're really smart. But is there um, a new project you're working on that that you want to sort of tell us about? I have a project uh, dedicated to the Armenian genocide in animation uh, feature film. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for sponsors. I would like to start to do it right now. And it's not talking about genocide, actually. It's about uh, directly. It's very interesting, Re real story. Uh, the author uh, is a uh, French-Algerian uh, comic artist, and we want to cooperate together on this. Uh, so this is a project that I'm pushing it forward right now. Um, there's many projects. I'm doing uh, a documentary film dedicated to Alexander Sarukhan, Armenian uh, best uh, caricatures for me, uh, Egyptian Armenian who passed away in 77 actually. He's, I'm doing a short documentary film for uh, about him. I just finished two uh, films, one in animation called Aurora, which is dedicated to Aurora, uh, the lady who survived from the genocide. Uh, uh, Asha Luis, mm -hmm. uh, but has nothing to do with the character. But the whole story is dedicated to genocide. But the another, I just finished fiction short film called Aborted, love story, uh, which will be released soon, maybe end of this year. Uh, many many projects. But besides, I, I love painting, so I have. Yeah, I can see projects. that. I can uh, see. I can't stop painting. So that part I can't open it. <laughs> But uh, if we go back to the motivation, and uh, there's a very, uh, one slogan that I used, uh, I use it in my uh, festival. We say, I say that uh, life is a picture, make it alive. Yeah. So uh, I think each person has the chance to get the picture in his mind, to have an idea. The picture is about symbolically uh, presenting an, an idea or something that you are passionately love it. But if you don't take care of it and if you don't uh, exactly, it won't uh, become right. alive. All you have to do is just to push it forward uh, because loving from distance is not enough. You know? Well, I'm telling you, this has been, uh, I don't know if you have time to sleep between all the projects that you're working on I and, I, and I expect that now you're also working, preparing for Reanimania in the fall and you have all of these wonderful caricatures that you do and your short films and uh, I really want to know what this is. <laughs> it's been sitting well. here on the bench 
which is, but what is this? <laughs> uh, this is actually like it has two missions. First, my uh, my guess. I think I know. I know. I know. Wait, wait, wait. Is it this to do this and to paint or no? Uh, you are very close to that. I mean, the first is the, if they don't sit uh, properly, I help them with this. No. Okay, I'm still. never gonna sit. For <laughs> this is this every painter they have uh, when uh, you want when the canvas is wet right. and you want to work. Uh, on the canvas, you just and then so I, I lean on close. it and work I was from. Pretty close. Yeah, <laughs> I mean you you were very close. Just yeah. So this for that. Okay. Well, I wish you much much success, and I hope to um, get an invitation for the opening of the Reanimania Film Festival. Yeah, especially <laughs> you will have definitely. I mean, uh, this especially is the fifth anniversary. Oh, of so Reanimania. it'll be special. It's and it's the tenth, I think, for Golden Apricot this year. Isn't it's it? tenth for the Golden Apricot, and it's the seventy-fifth anniversary of animation, uh, Armenian animation as well. Well, we'll be following you, Mr. Kasumi, and uh, I'm sure you you will be surprising us in the future. I hope so. I hope I keep surprising myself even. Yeah, of course, of course. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, coming and uh, hosting me.